Hey everybody, Radamon here. Thanks for tuning in to Mount and Blade 2 Bannerlord, a Let's Play tutorial series. One with these rules and goals in mind that you all voted on. So, I have good news and bad news. The good news is that patch 1.5 just released to the main branch, which adds a bunch of new things in. The bad news is there will be bugs with it. Uh, there's already some bugs reported with it. And... I'm going to have to spend a considerable amount of time right at the start of this episode going over skills because a lot of the new perks got rolled out. So let's go and do that. Uh, for Saralyn, she uses swords, so swift strike makes sense, but now to the bow skills. So I didn't really go over this before, but there are different types of benefits that you get uh, through perks. You have personal ones, you have captain ones, you have party leader ones, you have governor ones. Um, none of my companions will ever be governor. Governor, I am a governor, but they will not be governors. Uh, they can't own territory. They are just, you know, my companions. Um, captain skills are when you are in an army and you're not in lead of the army, but you lead a subset of the army. So when you enter a fight, a big fight with a big army, uh, you can designate your infantry, your cavalry, and your ranged as a captain to someone else where they can benefit those troops. So um, that's a captain skill. And the party leader skill is when you just lead your own army. So right now I am a party leader technically. Uh, but I just wanted to go over the differences there. So for the first skill I'm going to pick here, um, I'm going to pick bow control, which is um, reduce penalty by moving and, and over uh, dead aim, which is headshot bonus. The next one is... My attacks will, I'm not, I'm not really, for me personally, I'm not ever going to really benefit from the captain part of this. So, so for these, it's really just a difference of movement penalty versus headshot bonus because I'm, I'm the leader of this whole thing. I, I won't be a captain. So ignore 10% armor or uh, decrease re reload speed and movement penalty. I'm going to go ignore armor, a uh, rapid fire versus um, decrease accuracy due to rotating. I'm going to go rapid fire. And then Merry Men, which is... And now this pertains to me, the second skill, because it's a governor skill. I am indeed a governor. So Merry Men is party size and extra militia. And mounted archery is uh, reduced penalty while mounted, which I like. And then um, more security. So I'm going to... that That's the route I'm going to take. So... On to my husband, who's been renamed Damien. This one is a little bit more complicated uh, because he is likely to be a captain. So the thing is, we've sort of planned out that um, Damien and Trustin, because of their stats, are going to be the other army party leaders. So when assigning them skills, I have to consider that they will become party leaders and captains alike. So he is going to take... Uh, bow control as well. And then uh, also Bodkin. Also rapid fire. Just like me. Uh, but now trainer versus strong bows. So trainer is extra XP for lower level guys. Strong bows is more damage. Uh, take strong bows. And then here's another one. Uh, so th for this one, the second benefit is for governors. He's never going to be governor, so that doesn't really matter. So it's a difference of just personally damage versus mounts or or um, loss of accuracy when holding aim. Damage versus mounts. I don't think the AI aims very long. Um, so this one is personal versus captain, personal and captain, or personal and party leader. So personal and party leader, but this one is easy. Skirmish phase master for less damage from range attacks is incredibly good if it's working. Again, I just want to reiterate that some of these perks might not actually work, um, but I'm going to pick them anyway. So now here's captain and governor or party leader, party leader. So if he's a captain, range troops information gain extra XP or this one, which I'm definitely going to pick, renowned archer, which is when he's a party leader, morale goes up and... Uh, recruiting goes down the cost horse master uh, or deep quivers I'm going to pick horse master for a very specific reason um, 
I traded bows with him and then realized I couldn't use his bow, but he'll be able to use his bow. The horse master um, skill that I took with him allows him to use that giant noble bow on horseback. Perfect. I already tested. It works. All right. And now off to his crossbow skills. So I picked a bunch of uh, captain skills for bowmen, but if he was to be captain of all ranged units, I'd also have to consider that as well. So I'm going to pick Piercer here. His crossbows will ignore armor, which doesn't really matter because he doesn't use a crossbow. But as a party leader, uh, ranged troops are cheaper to recruit. So here's another one, personal and captain. Uh, let's go with Wind Winder, which is reload speed decrease for him and the troops under his command. Here's another personal and captain one. Um, reduce accuracy penalty by moving and troops information gain extra crossbow skill. Or headshot goes up and troops do more damage against foot troops. Sheriff, for sure. A peasant leader, um, which is a party or governor skill, and this is party and governor skill as well. So, increase morale for low levels, or range troops gain XP. Let's go range troops gain XP. Fletcher. So this is a personal and captain skill, both are. Increase stacks, or ignore armor. Let's do ignore armor. Um... Mount, uh, equip crossbows don't move me, slow me down, and ranged troops have increased movement speed, or a lack of interrupt. I'm going to go deft hands for a lack of interrupt. Uh, that's like if you're trying to reload your crossbow and you get hit, you still keep reloading, you don't reset. So you can't get, like, stun locked. And then the last one is personal captain or personal party leader. I'm going to do um, counter fire. They take less damage from range attacks. Okay, done. Uh, there's still a bunch more skills to assign, but um, trust in you use blades. Cool. And then I've already gone over all these, so um, I don't really need to go over them again. I'm making pretty much the same choices that, that Damien had. Like top, 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 down. Top, top, well, I didn't do, I didn't have the choice for, um, for Damien. He already had Merry Men assigned. So I picked Mounted Archery instead, um, because Trustin is mounted. And then for crossbows, uh, just a reminder here, we went up, down, down. So we can go up, down, down. I don't even really need to think about it because I've already justified uh, those choices. Uh, Richard the Stag. Um, so the difference here is Richard the Stag won't be a party leader. So I don't really need to worry about captain skills, just personal skills. Right? So personally... Mounted archery. And then because he'll never be a party leader, uh, obviously strongbows. That's a, that's a no-brainer. Helen. Um, again, not going to be a party leader or captain. So I'm just, I'm just picking uh, skills. And this first one doesn't even matter because Talon uses bows. So it doesn't matter. And then personal reload time or against mounts. Again, doesn't matter. Headshot damage, reload penalty. Doesn't matter because you don't use crossbows. Neither of these matter either. And these don't really matter either. Yeah. Uh, the problem is, of course, when I transitioned all of my companions away from using crossbows to use bows instead, um, that is a bit of a problem. Bash here, I'm going to give to be blunt. His name's Bash. I feel like he should have blunt weapons. And give him bow control. Alright, I'm almost done. Um... Who's got points left? Okay, Vredog. Swift Strike. And Val. Swift Strike. Alright, another thing I wanted to do is... Damien, give up your uh, your axe. And Bash, take that axe, that hatchet, 
because you now use them. And Damien, take the Spatha. Great. Damien... Oh, Damien also has to be blunt. I guess these were predetermined. Uh, but whatever. We'll, we'll have to fix that with buying another. Well, here. I'll, I'll switch the back. Bash, we're just going to have to find you a, uh, a proper blunt weapon that isn't garbage. It's, it'd be better if you used something high level than a low level blunt. Alright. So that's that all sorted out. All the new um, skill points. Uh, next up is some added influence. So, so far... Most of my policies have been um, influence-based, and I'm going to pick another one influence-based, which is Law Speakers, which means that high charm people gain more influence. I'm going to propose that. And now my charm per day goes up by 0.5. So another thing that 1.5 introduces is the ability to track armies. So Caravan of Silas and Caravan of Can are now uh, easily highlighted. I think due to 1.5 rolling out, I like sort of teleported because last episode I stopped around here and then all of a sudden I was at Rasos. Um, I think that's just a matter of uh, of um, the, the patch rollout. So I'm going to head back to my garrison. The things that I want to do um, now is to get ready for, for true big war. Our rotate here is looking pretty weak if I want to betray Batania. The other thing is if I look at the kingdom tab, let's just analyze this real quick. Batania is at war with Kuzate and Southern Empire, so they're split attention. The Southern Empire would be even better to go to war with, so I, I need to check... Uh, the strength of Jalmaris, Amatatis, or Zianica, uh, because they are really not doing well. And then while I'm down here, uh, I'm going to I'm going to analyze uh, the cues I have for the, my castles. So toll collector, and then militia. And then let's go gardens. I'm not going to put any more money into my castles. I want to put money into my companions now. I will put money into Legata though. That, that's an exception for sure. Uh, okay. Just I'm just mostly queuing up projects here. Southern Empire and Valandi just made peace. Well, that's not great for me, but okay. Uh, manage town. So, as I said, I'm dumping money in here. And we have Forum, Aqueducts, Marketplace. We have plenty queued up. Okay. So now I'm going to start doing a tour of... Uh, potentially raidable... Uh, cities to see if there's any opportunities right now at this moment to strike. And then if not, go on a recruiting run and setting up uh, my husband, Damien, or my... Um, no, Jamaris is already pretty well defended. Rotate isn't, but... It would be a Pyrrhic victory. I'd have to basically burn a lot of troops. Um, so let's let's start setting up armies. How about that? So the way to do this is to go to your clan tab. Um, and scroll down, or rather scroll down to parties, create a new party. And I'm going to say, hey Damien. It's going to be you. Damien can control 130 troops. So I'm going to give him... Um, Sort of the, my my best troops. So I'm going to give him 50 sharpshooters. Uh, 
10 Billman, 5 Banner Knights, uh, 25 Sergeants, 10 Hardened Crossbowmen, or 15. Oh no, hold on, Hardened. 15 Hardened Crossbowmen. Uh, okay, maybe some more Sergeants. I'm giving him, like, the really good ones. I hope that he doesn't lose them. Okay, I'm going to take one more ban one banner net away from you. So that is really the long and short of how to set up a party. So now, as you can see, Damien has his own set of troops. Um, and I can then rally Damien into my army if I want to. At the cost of nothing, right? I can say, hey, how about you um, come rally to me? Oh, another thing I wanted to do is... Okay. That's, that's good, I hope. Let me just... So now, um, I'm controlling Damien in a way where uh, I'm the raid leader, I'm the, I'm the army leader, and Damien is just uh, a captain in the army. Right? So we can check food, speed, seeing range, all that kind of stuff. Um... And this gives me the ability to have way more than my max troops because I can also trust and can become an army leader as well. And this is exactly what I have planned. All right, smithy. I have some smithing stamina. And Bash, you can help me refine some of the hardwoods. Oh, well, the hardwood, I guess. Okay, so if I want to start adding to my my army again to increase my size, I have to keep an eye on my expected change here. Uh, as Damien is now sort of paying for his own army. Um, it lightens the load for me, that's for sure. Let's go grab some additional Valandian troops. But I do have to keep an eye on uh, daily food change. So, there's the total parties in the army and food in the army, and I'm okay for now. This also gives me opportunity to gain some leadership skills, because I'm now leading an, not just my own party, but a whole army. Oh, a bunch of lobby recruits. All right. I never ended up being able to build up reputation with um, many of these Valandian uh, village leaders because I never ended up owning any Valandian territory. So as a result, I'm mostly just going to be offered up um, recruits. And then the onus is on me to see them leveled up or whatever. And I'm, I've been getting one recruit at a time. So I, I think the part of the problem is that uh, everybody's at war with everybody else. So as a, as a result, um, you've got party, you know, raid leaders or party leaders like Ospier here who's going around recruiting everybody, which means there's just not a lot of people left for me to recruit from. Garantor's Castle just flipped. That might be a good potential target. And then once my my army is full, which won't be for a, a good long time, but once my army is... Oh my god, there's no one. Uh, once my army is full, uh, I can then set Trustin up for an, uh, an army. And the thing is, if you take a look at your clan tier, um, I can have two other parties. So I can have Trustin and one other person, which would probably be Can. Um... and you can be the engineer.
Man, Cusate, you're looking scary. Cusate and Batania. Oh, so, uh, Can just got attacked by, um, by looters, but it's so far away from me that even if I started riding that way right now, it wouldn't really matter. I'm not going to get there in time. That's, I guess, what I'm trying to say. So, all I can do is hope that Can survives. But the, oh yep, Can's Caravan survived. The daily expected um, change went down because of the, the Caravan rating, no. Dear Lord, I'm going to have to eke out an army from one unit at a time. Drive me crazy. Stupid Volandia. Stop going to stupid war. <laughs> so I can actually recruit some people. Train troops. Bandit base. You know what? I'll do a bandit base. It's almost night time and it's a bit of a change of pace. Can I get there in time? No, it's daytime. Alright. We'll go to Furton and then double back to the hideout. Okay. No point in going to Furton. <laughs> Waiting until nightfall also, uh, I believe, gives me the smithing stamina. Alright, attack. Manage troops. This is obviously a very, very, very different screen. I'm going to bring my, um, my companions first, and then... Let's bring, where am I? Oh, here's sharpshooters. That's my hideout crew. Now, the only problem with the Rumfalia on my back is the duel that I'm heading into, I'm obviously going to have a Rumfalia for, which means I don't have a shield. Unless I, unless I, I tell the uh, bandit base leader no dueling. That's always a possibility. Say, you know, I take no prisoners. And then the other problem with the Rumfalia is it makes it a little difficult to aim. As you can see, the it on my back blocks my vision. It's just sort of in the way. Oh, you got me. Ooh, a bushwhacker just killed my uh, sharpshooter. I don't like that. I don't have too many sharpshooters. All right, shut up, tutorial. Bushwhacker just knocked a sharpshooter unconscious. And now it is the duel. And I'll try to duel with this Rumfalia. Just for laughs, I guess. We'll see how this goes. <laughs> Duel's fun. <laughs> that was funny. Alright, let's take the prisoner. And grab their stuff. And, uh, finished. And now, he likes me a little bit more. Well, would potentially offer me some additional recruits sometime in the future. Alright, let's keep filling up this army. 
So I'm at a point now where I have more troops, maybe not in terms of veterancy, but I have higher number of troops than I really ever have in one army. Also, see this bar here? This is cohesion. Um, I can use my influence to increase cohesion, which means once your cohesion hits zero, uh, your army disbands. So the more the more members that you have in the army, the quicker it will disband. And you use cohesion, use influence to benefit cohesion. Speaking of influence, I just hit 100 again. Um, so if you take a look at my, my daily change, expect to change has gone up because of clan members in the army, uh, law speakers, etc, etc. So let's go ahead and um, enact a new policy. Um, I'm going to enact feudal inheritance. Feudal inheritance uh, gives me additional influence for each uh, fief I own. It does double the cost of revoking one, but I, I hopefully will never have to revoke. Um, I'm pretty sure I hit propose. Wait, where where is feudal? Here it is. Done. Okay. So now my expected change is seven influence a turn. I mean, it is pretty crazy. That's a lot of influence. I, I, up from, you know, how many were, how many was I getting uh, a few episodes back? Like one, right? Some quick policy changes and you can very quickly find yourself in the money. Uh, another thing I'm gonna need to do is to, given the amount of, um, whoa, way too much grain. Given the amount of troops I have, oh, let, me, let me reset, is constantly be buying food everywhere I go. But I accidentally hold control, which is not what I meant to do. And food variety gives leadership and stewardship, so. A 4k no problem and ransom off those prisoners let's keep adding to this army yeah my stewardship and leadership are taken off Talon just gained a level Oh, leveled up in scouting. What hit 150? Heft, personal forests, I guess, because I don't find myself in deserts very often. Uh, what? Just uh. don't know why my reputation just tanked with strangers. Another thing that you've probably noticed is a lot of people are dying of old age. This is a result of the 1.5 patch. I don't know why the 1.5 patch has cranked up like death due to old age to like maybe maybe it was not calculating death old age earlier. Um I'm just trying to figure out if my siblings are aging up uh, at an increased rate. Let's see. Uh, Alda. You're 17? Okay. So Alda's actually going to become uh, a family member pretty soon. That can be issued orders and all that. She hits 18. Ooh, I gained a level because my leadership went up. Leading an army has benefits, even if I'm just marching around, going nowhere. So, I gain a free attribute point. And... I'm going to put this to social. Bring my social up to 7. And a free focus point, which I will put into polearms. As I'm uh, 
a little bit dedicated to the pole arms now. As you can see, it uh, it takes a pretty long time to add troops, and of course the troops I'm adding are garbage. I mean, they're just they're just recruits. So not only does it take a long time to to recruit, but uh, then to train them, yeah, it's expensive. You got to be very tactful about how you use your troops as a result. Uh, I'm just taking a look at. I, I, and I should do this more often. Uh, that's a dumb looking helmet. It's good, but dumb looking helmet. Take a look at uh, sort of the arms and armor that are available to me. Although, I, I say that's a dumb looking helmet. My helmet arguably is dumber looking. Because I have a, an imperial helmet. Okay, Amatatus just flipped. Oh, it flipped back. Okay. Um, that's a pretty good indicator that I ought to get my butt down to the Southern Empire. So I'm going to do sort of a loop here. Recruiting this area. And then head back down towards um, Southern Empire territories. Because they're reclaiming some. And I totally, totally, totally wouldn't mind going to war with the Southern Empire for a town. That sounds phenomenal. And uh, I'm building up the army to allow me to do that. I have 102 new recruits. And that is only growing. I'll see if I can't hit capacity. Training them is going to be a beast. I'm going to need to hit looter groups like nobody's business. Right, let's pass by Alantis. That's a funny name. And Revolt. I'm still like 50 troops away from Max. Oh, that influence change is just delicious. Whoa, Kuzate just captured a ton of Batanians. I think Kuzate's really the scary one now. They're the they're the they're the behemoth. They're the Goliath. Okay, we're getting pretty close to troop max. Uh, let's actually go this way. As you can see, the larger my army, the slower we move. So, we are not agile at all. But, we're getting massive. I'm a, I'm a good 100 plus larger than I've ever been. In terms of army size. I mean, when, when including Damien, the hubby. I'm actually not certain that this territory was culturally Valandian. I mean, as you can see, I haven't accidentally added anything incorrect. Oh, also, okay, Richard the Stag, you should be in four. And then all of my Valandian recruits. Yeah, heavy infantry. So, so I can command them separately. So if I hit a group of looters, I can just send my uh, my recruits in. Alright, I have room for nine more. I should be able to pick that up at Kaliak and Sargo. And Us and, and... Yes. Yep. I think so. And we have some spending money, so let me see... Ah, oh, yes, perfect. I have max size. 
Let's see if they have anything fitting a queen here. Uh, they have male mittens that I could buy. And then I'll just roll these hand-me-downs through the, uh, the remaining army. Ooh, where'd you the stag? I didn't realize you had such junk. Done. Okay, so let's get to... Oh, who the heck? Landia took Ortesia. Alright. That's a... Uh, I think they actually did own that. But that's a bit of a twist. So my caravans are going to be in, in jeopardy if I do declare a war on anyone. So let's analyze diplomacy for a second. Um, Sturgia and Northern Empire, as you can see. Kuzate's the monster, and they're at war with Batania. Batania's losing, because they're at war with Southern Empire and Kuzate. Western Empire doesn't really exist. Azurai is at war with Volandia. Um, Southern Empire with Batania. And Volandia with Azurai and Northern... Oh, but yeah, Azurai. So Kuzate... Because it's not to be messed with. That's the scary one. But as everyone else is fair game. Southern Empire would be ideal. Gar Grontor Castle is under siege by Valandia. So I'm just going to leave this area. There's nothing. There's not much to be had here. Although Artisia would be very siegeable. But it's. I would be backstabbing Valandia, which is. I don't necessarily want to go to war with Valandia. I'd rather take a Southern Empire territory. It looks like a ton of the territories on the border of Rote are coming under siege. So I'm going to take a look at Rote real quick. See if, if people have been... Oh yeah, Rote is somewhat softened up. Of course, it's softened up, um, but it's still Batanian. I'm going to take a look at Amatatus and just size everything up. But Rote looks maybe the easiest, and it is the town adjacent to my own. Oh, no. Amatatus. Yep, Amatatus, I'm coming for you. That is a soft target. Very soft target. Alright, so to do that, I really ought to have ambushed uh, Joron here. Come on, let me let me go faster. Or Vipora, uh, Vipon. Okay, they're they're actually sending some backup here. My uh, window of opportunity is quickly vanishing. Luchin, I'm coming, only because I want to. Ambush. Who's got, uh... Who's got an exclamation mark? Okay. I'm gonna have to do this carefully because there's a lot of forces around. I want this group to disperse. Here we go. Obos. Can I cut you? No. Alright, Southern Empire and Sarlandia at war. Kind of saw that coming as I caused it. So, here is the captaining. So, Damien is going to be the commander of archers. So, all of his captain benefit perks that he has will get passed down to the archers. Everyone! With that said, I do control Freedom! his troops, my troops. Where are they going? Infantry they are moving to the right and fast. 
Are they trying to flee? I don't think so. They're just being weird. But I see him. I see him in the shiny horse that he is. With this uh, Rumphalia, it's very, very effective at taking out nobles. I hit his shield. Because I have my Banner Knights coming in. They're all set to follow. downed. I just put everybody in charge of themselves. It's not necessarily the smartest play, but it allows me to focus on my own success and survival here. As you can see, our sharpshooters are raining hell down on these guys. And I got to personally knock out Obos. Not that I had any... My, qual my issue wasn't with him, just the queen that he serves. Or she. I, I didn't even check. I think Obos was a man. Ow. That crossbow hit actually hurt. Yo, stop it. Okay, I'm just backing up. They had me sort of stun locked there. See, now it's personal, because I'm at the brink of death here. I don't see that they have... Nope. We didn't even get anyone killed. Took out their whole party, took no losses. I was almost the only fatality there. Okay, so I plundered some money. Damien was actually the one that captured Olbos, even though I was the one that knocked him out. And besieged the town. As you can see, the uh, Batanian war party is helping to whittle down the reinforcements that would have um, helped out. And now that we're in a... Uh, in a siege here, um, it would give me the chance to personally heal up. So before we go into the next battle, I'm going to uh, level up all the people that can be, because we're going to lose the opportunity to level them up afterwards. So there's a lot of... Um, there's a lot of Southern Empire in small stacks around me. They're trying to build up the... Um, the courage to attack me. Oh yeah, here we go. Oh, I'm, a, I'm about this. Here we go. Here's a big, big, big fight. So there's about twice as many of them as there is me. And unfortunately, Sarlin is already uh, wounded, but um, to me! that has me not discouraged at all. I'll just have to be very careful. Actually, I kind of like the rocky Bowman! area that I have here. Move! Move! Up! Arrows! Footmen! Shields for Come on, crossbow. You know how I said it'd be safe? Well, I'm not doing that.
So I have everybody holding position. With my shield walls. I want to take out their nobles as much as... Oh, there goes Vipon. As much as I can. There goes Ira. See another one. Unless my troops get him. There goes Joran. I might be super wounded. Oh, you got knocked out. Don't even know who you were. Uh, that's another noble down there. Oh, this one. Literally, oh no, this is... Oh, that's a noble. Let's see if I can't get him to... Uh-oh, horsey, no. Nope, don't hit me. Alright, let's get out of the range of their archers. My troops are just holding the hill, holding the high ground. That's how I, how I want it. Oh, here you are again. There you go. Haha, <laughs> that was a good shot. Alright, you look like a noble too. Baron just got knocked out. They are losing their nobles very, very quickly. Here, let me just shoot in the, into the crowd. Oh, who's that? That's another noble over there. Man, I can't hit anything right now. Luckily, I have two quivers. Alright, I'm telling everyone to charge. And then I'm being risky. I'm gonna lurk around their nobles to see if I can't pop a quick shot off. Cap myself another noble. I just have to be... Ah, oh, they got me. Alright, let's fast forward the remainder of this fight. Oh, this is going to be very Pyrrhic. We're, we'll win, but at crazy cost. Woo! Jesus! Oh, man. What a fight. What an absolute fight. Uh, how many prisoners am I allowed to take? 38? <laughs> oh, uh, that's because I, I just, um, well, I got the snot kicked out of me, personally. And, uh, oh, no, these are recruits. Excuse me. Uh, prisoners. Oh, boy. All right, so are there any Batanians in here? Here's, here's the thing. I can take all of them. Just about all of them. Because... 
I'm not allowed to have non Volandians, but uh, Damien can. And I can just hand all those troops over to Damien um, at the end of this. So I have room for some prisoners now. So let's fill up our prisoners with their high level, high level people. Taking the ones that will garner the most ransom. All right, uh, got a little bit more room. Uh, two more. One and two. Oh, no, one more, sorry. Math. Done. I'm troop over limit. That's not a problem. Take all the bounty. Talk to Damien. I'd like to inspect your troops. All right. Uh, Damien, I am going to... Take all the Valandians off of you. And give you all of my Batanians. And then any... The key doesn't have capacity for will be disbanded. Plus, like, looters and stuff. Brigands, Hellmen. Yeah, there's a lot here that just... I have no interest. Alright, I'm gonna level up as many people as we can. Because we're potentially going into a siege. Everybody is super hurt. Um, Alright, Damien's party is about 70-ish over capacity. So, uh, what I'm going to do is, done first, inspect the troops again. Oh, you know what I could do, actually? Is, leave now. Um, I know I'm, I'm a little bit over time here. But... Uh, Noggin, it's time for you to form your own party. Or Trustin. I keep calling you Noggin. Done. Done. And then... Army. I'm going to actually lift the siege because I have stuff to do. So, talk to party leader. I'm going to take some troops off of uh, Damien here. To the point where he's not over, over limit. And give them to Trusted. Alright, so you're four over. Uh, one, two, three, four. Done. Inspect troops. Done. All right, so he won't join because he has a lack of, um, I need to add some more to him. Actually, that's not true. Join my army. And now, now, uh, this is a good place to stop. But as you can see, I actually have, uh, well, I have a ton of wounded troops, but I actually have more troops than I might have even had prior yeah. Oh, delicious. All right, guys. Well, that is all the time I have, plus uh, about 10 extra minutes. Uh, if you have any feedback for me, do drop me a line. If you liked that crazy battle as much as I did, oh, I did. I got to personally dispatch 
Um, just a crazy amount of their uh, of their vassals, of their nobles. Uh, drop me a line in the comments below if you got feedback. Thanks for watching. I'm sure next episode is going to be pretty spicy. Adios.